Spider-Man Life Story is a collection of single issues from Chip Zdusky and Mark Bagley about imagining if Spider-Man was created in the 60s and grew up through the comics instead of having the age sort of arrested as happens with comics characters um, up to the point of him dying around about now. Um, it comprises a collection of six issues and goes from the 60s to the 10s um, and the first thing to get out of the way is just the quality of the the trade. This I think is meant to be a sort of prestige Spider-Man story and it is but the quality of this trade is not very good. You pick it up and it feels cheap, um, floppy, the paperwork in it is it's wafer thin and it feels like it would tear if you handled it wrong um, and it just feels like a real real cheap production. Um, I feel a little bit annoyed to be honest that I paid you know full price for this because I was keen to read it but um, really it needs to come out in a more prestige format with better quality printing than that. I would not recommend anyone buy this um, a tangible copy anyway for full price either get it reduced or, or wait until they bring out a sort of deluxe or special edition of it. Okay that out of the way though. Um, the art in it is good. If you like um, Ultimate Spider-Man then you'll be familiar with the art. Mark Bagley draws the characters as if they're in Ultimate Spider-Man, albeit a few tweaks for costumes etc but their facial structures and that are the same. Um, I like Ultimate Spider-Man, I've got them all so I was quite happy with all of that. The story, it's it's amazing how for this, in six issues they manage to touch on and condense elements of key Spider-Man stories um, throughout them. You've got touches of um, you know, Venom, Clone Saga, you've got um, Morlun um, and obviously um, all of that. Um, you've got the Death of Gwen Stacy, you've got um, the Green Goblin, both versions of it. Uh, it's great. Oh and you also get Flash Thompson um, who dies in this in Vietnam and a little twist on it is that you have Captain America going to Vietnam to fight um, and he ends up defending the locals from sort of villainous troops who have sort of lost their way let's say you know are doing lots of platoon type things in the jungle. Um, it deals with dra dramatic elements and comedy elements really well. Um, you're grossed throughout the story. I read it in one sitting and I'm quite happy to. You don't ever feel that it's laboured and just when you start getting used to a time period and how he is in a time period, you jump forward 10 years to the next set. What's funny is that they look at the way other people in his life and due to his age he would look at different problems in his life. Um, one particular thing, he has two kids and you you find that when more lung comes, what took Spider-Man ages to work out, they work out in about five minutes how to how to stop him and kill him, and it's just dealt with. And I thought well, that's quite quite clever. Cause if you have more than one person with spider powers and you've got someone to ask for help, then you know you just remedy that problem quite quickly. Um, whereas of course Spider-Man wouldn't probably have asked for much help. He try and deal with it on his own because he feels he's got his responsibility in that. Um, it also has one of the best Spider-Man panels, I think, uh, ever in it, which is when Spider-Man's left on his own with Aunt May, uh, elderly Aunt May, in his flat, and it's just Aunt May sitting at the window, and Peter Parker with his head in his hands in, in the background as he's been left on his own with her and he knows that he's fucking stuck with her and there's nothing he can do about it until she dies and that's his lot in life because he knows he's not strong enough to put her in a home or do anything with her um, and it just it's both sad and humorous as well because it totally sums up all the problems of Peter Parker in one go and it's just wonderfully done I watched it I looked at we've watched it I looked at the picture and I just thought yeah you know it, it's both <laughs> it, it's a perfect thing of Peter Parker's problems. Um, it has a good ending to it. Uh, it's, it's very sad ending. It upset me at the end of the book, which is um, unusual, and I suppose only just goes to show that it makes you involved because you've seen this person's story all the way through their life. It's a little bit like that sequencing up 
where you see their whole life play out um, to the death of obviously the chap's wife. This is this is similar, but in an entire story format. You follow him through his life and up until his death, and you just feel you feel in touch with the characters and you feel sad. The one problem I've always had with modern Marvel is you try and read an event or something and there's so much going on, too many characters, too many things going on, too much history, too much baggage, and it just makes it boring and not very fun, which is why I've totally gone off their books at the moment, you know, but I read this because it's set in its own little world and it's got its own bit of continuity to it. Definitely worth reading if you see it cheap in the sales for digital. Uh, I say pick it up. Uh, if you can get a cheap copy, um, then sort of, well, just any discount off the sort of standard trade price, do it because you'll see if when you get the trade, you won't be very happy with it. If you can pick it up secondhand somewhere or um, from a sort of used bookseller, um, World of Books or something like that, then it's worth um, worth getting it. But definitely worth reading at some point, but like I say, just not worth paying the full cover price for due to the qual lack of quality in the um, in the production. Um, but Spider-Man Life Story, yeah, a total recommended read, I think, a lot for a long time for Spider-Man books or people who are looking to get into comic books and want to start with something they know which is Spider-Man.